So um, today we are going to talk about business processes, uh, like different business processes, what business process framework is, how we can um, configure different types of uh, business processes in the system. So that's the this is the agenda of our today's session. We'll uh, like we'll go through some basics of business process, different kind of steps, and uh, how we can, for example, uh, set different kind of uh, notifications. So um, the overview of business process. So generally, before I go into this, the the idea to understand is that business process any business that is running there are uh, there are different processes going on in the business it can be as simple as um, uh, like any um, any approval process for any uh, like forget for, for getting an approval from for example from any department head from any manager um, from workday perspective the most common examples are so for example hiring is one business process there can be different steps involved different tasks involved in that process termination is another business process similarly there can be different tasks in that business process there can be different people involved in that whole process not everybody can perform uh, all the tasks that are involved in the business process. So depending on um, like uh, depending on the structure, depending on the configuration, uh, these these tasks can differ and the people who can perform those tasks also varies depending on how we are, have structured the whole process. So every time there will be someone who will be initiating the business process so for example uh, if i want to let's say um, i want to hire a person for like under my team let's say i i am going to put a job requisition for that because i want to take approval from my management so i am the initiator of that process so there will there will always be someone who will be initiating any business process then um, that business process will go into like to the next step uh, from if we if we see a generic overview so there will be uh, an initiator who will kick off the business process then work they will determine that will uh, which process definition um, should uh, should be used and then based on that it will go further that what the target business object is uh, is it an employee is it something else uh, maybe it can be for example a compensation event so and then uh, then we'll further move to the different steps that are configured in that business process and depending on what uh, what role is assigned to specific users different events will uh, keep going and then uh, once the the target of the process is achieved then the process is complete so for example if we take an example uh, if we go by the same example of hiring process so i um, i initiated that request so i am the initiator it will go further and for example um, uh, maybe there are let's say three more steps approval steps involved in the process or maybe two more steps involved in the process so as soon and how workday is actually understanding that so maybe let's say if we, in the business process we have uh, like specified it that anybody who has a manager role can only uh, kick off the business process, uh, the higher business process, for example. So we'll define the roles and then based on that, different people will be able to perform different tasks in that business process. We'll also take a look in later uh, part of the session that how it works. So again, that's uh, 
that's a simple higher process that's an example of a higher process so as i mentioned specific groups or people with a specific rights can initiate the process there will of course be some compensation because when i am uh, initiating that process i would know that what kind of resource i'm looking for what's the proposed compensation for that uh, maybe i'm not a manager i am a, on a lower layer but i do have some uh, like i do uh, have that uh, role that i can request for an additional resource but then it will go to my manager maybe if uh, depending on if how many approval chains are there maybe it, it might go to senior manager and once that is approved then it would go uh, come back to hr uh, hr would review and then approve it uh, maybe we can uh have final approval once it's approved by hr and then it will uh like we'll proceed and so these are the different uh steps performed and different people will be able to perform those tasks in the business process so configurable business process what what happens what is business process what uh, is business process framework so it actually helps us to define and implement business process uh, business processes to suit the way our company works so as i mentioned if the company has uh, like like offices at different locations there might be uh depending on uh size structure requirement they might be having different business processes they can have different tasks so we can actually choose those tasks we can also define uh customized business processes for any supervisory organizations so going back to our like uh, past discussions supervisory organization is the base of work day hcm and we can uh, so over here we actually mean that for example let's say i have um, i am uh, or anybody is a top manager of the company like top uh, the you can say the president of the company for example so we created a specific supervisory organization which is uh, of company which is a company and we have actually defined a business process for that now it can um, it will be inherited and subordinate organizations will would use the same process but if we want it to be customized for a particular supervisory organization we can do that as well so let's say um, there is an organization headquartered in us and uh, later on for example they opened up another office in any other country now the us entity it's following the same business process and let's say when it's going uh, when we opened up another office in another region we thought that there should be some uh, separate um, business process for that specific regions uh, like employees or uh, specific regions requirement so we can have a separate business process for that region for example it all depends uh, and there of course it's not like that i have to do it just for the sake of doing it there must be some background some reason why we are having a different business process for another organization so we can uh make such changes as well it all depends either we can have just one business process across the board or we can have a uh, different depending on the requirement so as i mentioned business um business process includes task tasks that are needed to be completed in order for a business event to occur so as i mentioned there the different tasks approvals all these tasks actually combine and make a business process uh when we are defining any business process we have to specify the security group responsible for each task or steps so that's the same thing that i was talking about 
uh, not everybody in the organization would have the access or would have the right to create a job requisition so let's say i have uh, i have like people let's say um, let's take an example like accounting team now uh, there is a junior accountant or maybe there is an accountant but that until unless that individual has some additional responsibility he or she would will, will not be able to actually ex, uh, even access the business process why because that's not uh, that's not needed for him and his job his core job is something else and he does not have he or she does not have any managerial responsibility or a budget responsibility so he or she should not have the access of uh, initiating the business process so we we specify these things that who can do what and based on that we assign different uh, security groups and roles to different uh, like business processes and business, uh, when we are configuring the business process it actually notifies the worker in these groups and get feedback on which uh, on which like on when each step is complete so that it can move on to the next step uh, and sometimes it happens that let's say uh, i give hr example because generally hr is the owner of the system so let's say um, a job requisition is initiated it's approved and it <clears throat> hr it's actually routed to hr partner so hr partner role uh, is like multiple people can have hr partner role so that process will go to hr partner and any any of those people with hr partner role can actually uh, perform the task that is due so it it depends again uh, and that's the reason whenever these business processes are configured they are thoroughly tested uh, that who can see what who can do what so uh, some uh, some business processes examples so create position uh, create job requisition um, contract contingent worker uh, if we are ending a contract of a, a contingent worker if we are transferring uh, if we are transferring one um, employee or one worker to another um, from one worker from a specific supervisory to another supervisory again that's a transfer process we can uh, hire a person we can change the job we can change the location we can change the job details all of these things are actually getting through getting done through business process that are configured at back end so uh, and we'll of course we'll see uh, different examples of these processes uh, then we have examples uh, so if we talk about compensation specific uh, business processes so we can we have a one time payment request so for example um, someone is getting a spot bonus maybe um, or maybe a referral bonus let's say uh, or maybe any kind of payment incentive. So there is a request one time payment business process. We can uh, like process it uh, using that business process. We can also uh, request a stock grant. We can also request compensation change. We can also propose uh, compensation. So, so these are the different examples we can enroll different people in different benefits we can change the benefits we can change um, retirement like uh, savings so any any kind of benefits and anything the all the processes that are going in the system there is some configuration done at back end and by do, by using those uh, configurations we run different processes in the system. These are again some of uh, like 
some additional examples of uh, configurable business processes. So time of request, um, leave of absence, correct time off, all of these, these are the different examples of business processes. Again, personal data events, uh, added ID information, personal information chain, marital status change, these all are different examples of business processes. So before we, um, before we move to the next step, let's just um, take a look of how we can uh, like how we can access uh, these business processes and the steps that we just talked about so um for uh, for searching and if i am uh, basically targeting business process only so i can use bp b for business p, a, p for process and let's say if i want to take uh, i want to see higher business process so these uh, these are the different business processes, higher business processes available in the system. So you see higher business process and let's say, let's just take a look of this one. So these, these are different business processes. It can be just one simple business process for uh, like for the whole uh, organization. And as I mentioned, or it can be um, like different for different regions, maybe different supervisory organization, depending on what we are actually looking for. So let's just take a look of uh, okay, so somebody probably made it. Let's um, so uh, higher higher equalization is the name of the business process, and these are the steps that we have defined here in these business processes. So let's just take a look of that. So as we discussed in, in the slides, there the process, the process will be uh, initiated. Um, then there will be some, there will be some action and there will be certain people or group of people who will have certain uh, roles to perform these specific um, like task. Now over here, if we if we see um, like step C, so this is the order we are defining. We can always uh, like uh, change the order depending on our requirement. So if over here we see that parent process is pending or has completed but does not have a change organization, so um, in this step. Um, if applic it's actually checking if there is a workday account, if there is already um, any onboarding is in progress. And sometimes uh, we have multiple business projects, so and maybe any step of a particular business process can also trigger another business process. So let's say, so that's another business process, which is onboarding. So again, there are different, uh, different uh, tasks listed here. So, and based on the steps that we have defined in this business process, we'll be uh, like, we'll see in the system that we'll get that each step. So um, we may also uh, like uh, set some notifications uh, in the business process on different steps of those business processes. So let's just do a simple one. Again, that's a random record I have opened. Now, Lisa is a customer service representative. Now, uh, we talked about uh, 
as an example we talked about a business process of um one time compensation uh, request one time payment so let's just try and see that so when i want to uh, like request that payment let's say i am doing it for today uh, i am doing it for this employee now what what's the what i uh, when i want this to be visible to employee i can specify the date here why i am uh, what i am basically why i am paying that one what's the reason of that one time payment is it a, a, it can be an award is it a bonus a merit performance referral anything and let's say i am doing it as a performance bonus over here i can uh, specify it further maybe i might have uh, certain plans already configured here it can be an amount based plan it can be a percentage based plan so i can uh, define it here let's say i am now once i selected the plan now i over here i can specify that how much i want to pay in which current currency i want to pay and then for example if i have an integration with payroll system so i can also mark their send to payroll and it will uh it will be recorded in uh, in the report or in the data that will be sent to the payroll and let's say if i want to add a document here so let's say i got an email i am an hr partner and i got an email from the manager that this xyz employee should get uh, this amount of spot bonus uh this month so uh i and i want payroll people want me to uh attach a proof or an approval i can actually do that through system as well or i can maybe attach uh, any email or any file over here as well so this is the whole process and now i am going to submit it now i have submit the process the process is done the reason why process is done because i am right now doing it through logan's profile and logan has um like super, super user access but if for example manager would do it maybe uh there might be some steps and let's just take a quick look of so again we have just executed one time payment process and now let's let's just take a look of sorry um business process so so it's the same that um uh, compensation partners so it can be done by compensation at sorry compensation administrator so compensation administrator can perform an action on this request so again we have defined the business process at the back end and based on that our process will flow so this is just an example to give the understanding that how these business processes work and again depending on how we have actually um, configured the business process so depending on uh, what our requirement is what are the processes we um, we we want so based on that we can define different steps and uh, accordingly that process will go through so coming back to our slides again these are all business process examples and you can practice it uh, like if you want to like um 
change the date of birth maybe add it id information anything all these these all these are a combination of business uh, processes so just to show one more example so let's say these are this is the personal information again there uh, there can be different ids and i want if i want to change that id and let's say uh, let me just okay so it's not aligning properly but anyways this is that, that's just a process so all of these uh, these different options that are available in the system these are getting there is a there are different configurations done at uh, the back end and based on that we can perform different actions so uh, if um, i want to change work information depending on what access rights i have i can actually uh, run the process or at least perform one or more tasks involved in that specific business process so coming back to our slides now uh, default processes versus uh, versus customized processes so let's see what's the difference so uh, there are different processes and sub processes and why we why we need to understand because uh we know what configuration would make most sense for our business so let's say again initiate hire uh we we want all these business uh, steps to be involved in the business process we can have it so there is a default process delivered by workday that's there but let's say if uh, for a, for any reason i want to add or make uh, changes to it i can do it and then i can link it to my uh, organization um default versus uh, organization specific so uh, now the example shown here is is um, specific to gms tenant that we are using so you will see that this is the same structure we have and uh so there can be different business process and when i actually searched for it we saw that there was a list of different business higher business processes so uh i can have one business process for all the organizations or for all the supervisories of gms or i can say that for legal i need a different one it all depends or maybe for uh for acme corp which is you can say a different company or a different division in uh, in my organization so i want that there should be a different business process for this one so we are using a default process for here and we are using a uh, hire for gms process here again depending on what our requirement is we can decide which process uh, we want to use and which steps or tasks should should be added in in those business processes so um, again same thing creating organization specific business processes workday allows a different set of steps or business process workflow to be created for a specific supervisory organization so for example the higher business process used by it could be different than the higher business process used by hr through creating organization specific business processes you can override the default definition by copying it and then configuring the copy on a particular supervisory organization uh you can do the following to create a organization specific business process which will be discussed later on the slide so i already mentioned that we can define different business processes we can simply create a copy of business process and then make changes and then uh, uh assign it to or link it to a specific supervisory organization now we need to understand what's the what's the pros and what's the cons of having like the of using default versus organization specific uh 
generally default why uh, default business process are recommended why because there is a standard that's created and it's easy to maintain and of course the the, the default process that is available that is being designed uh, considering the uh, the normal flow of processes because uh, no matter uh, what the organization is generally the default the the default processes are covering uh, the necessary requirements so uh, that's the recommended approach and having too many business processes makes it uh, difficult to maintain uh, what are the what are the cons so if we have certain conditional rules uh, like the complex conditional rules can slow processing uh, processing time uh, organization is specific so again easy uh, the benefit is uh, easier to analyze that i know that for this uh, organization for example i want to use uh, this if the, my process is complex for a particular organization i can design it according to my need um, the con is uh, that of course uh, maintenance um, maintenance is a little bit difficult because if I have to copy again and again all this uh, the business process or different business process or their tasks because I have a specific requirement for different organizations. Testing uh, the thing that I was mentioning that we have to make sure if we are building different or creating different uh, BPs for different organizations and we have to make sure that we are testing all of them. We are validating each and everything before deploying on the, on the production. Yes, that's a standard flow of any system that uh, whenever we are configuring it, we have to test it. But if we are going to specify it too much for different organization, it means that we are adding that uh, more to our work that we have to test and validate all the things. So copying business process, um, I would I would show how it's done. It's quite simple. Uh, we that three dot action button is there. Uh, we'll go there and copy the workflow definition. So workflow uh, definition to that business object. So the, uh, the process that's already created. We just make a copy of it, and if we need to. Um, make any let's say there are four or five steps in the business process and i just want to add it maybe one to one thing in that so i can simply create the uh, copy the business process and i'll just add it that one approval step uh, approval step maybe or one any any task in that step and then make the change according to my specific need uh, we can by the way we can also have different uh, questionnaires or different uh, I mean we can uh, add a questionnaire in the business process as well we'll see it uh, generally it's done uh, it's there in uh, determination process sometimes managers are um, like managers have to uh, uh, fill the questionnaire and then based on the answer of that questionnaire that process is routed to a particular set of individuals Business process definitions, um, as we have already talked about it, start the business process, perform actions within the business process, uh, then the entire business process, um, we can approve, correct, cancel, and recent steps. We can also reassign tasks. Uh, and we'll take a look of uh, all these things shortly. Then we have um, so order of execution. You can specify the order in which certain items occur within a business process. Um, what are what's uh, the order of business process steps? So that that order um, order uh, field A B C that was actually telling us which A would go first, B would go second. We can change the order if we want. The order of to do list in a chair, The order in which a step. Uh, help, help is processed. So useful note: some of the some these are some of the um, 
tips and tricks of uh, like using the business process so um, you you must have seen that when i uh, when i was trying to access that i typed bp and then the name of different business process so um, that's that's like easy that actually specifies your um, specify your search uh, if i so for example if i would just type higher and i would not use the word bp so system will give me uh, will pull the results everything with higher keyword it's just uh, work the same way we uh, like google so it just pull the results based on the word if i'm going to add bp so bp means that my search will be specific to um uh, like uh, business process all bps available for the supervisory organizations are listed under the supervisory organization business process menu um, issues with adding other groups such as finance executive as approver must have access to domain and be part of uh, bp security policy uh, use the business process security policies for functional area report. It will tell uh, tell you that, for example, the proposed compensation higher business process policy is in the core compensation functional area. When a completion step finishes, the business process is listed as complete, even if there are more steps to do. So, for example, a person can be listed as hired, even if the steps for having the new employee enter their personal information and w4 form are not done completion makes the data for the business process available to other systems like payroll if there are no completion steps the business process is considered complete now um so for example i am running a higher business process i being an hr partner I run the business process, the process was completed, but there were there are some specific details, so personal details, personal information, and then uh, W4, which is, which is uh, employees withholding uh, certificate. So uh, tax certificates are not done. That's because we have actually specified there that um, that process or those steps will take time but higher processes executed again depending on uh, if we what completion steps we are defining there uh, the business process configuration report provides the steps available for that business uh, process type such as approval checklist questionnaire to do uh, service um, so before we move further, just to uh, give an example. So let's say uh, we are running a higher process. And again, the why we use this system, the idea is to uh, make our life easy. The idea is to integrate different tools and make our life easy, makes uh, things automated, save your time, reduce the chances of mistakes. So just as an example that, um, and the thing that I mentioned that sometimes uh, one business process actually trigger another business process. So let's say um, if we have <clears throat> um, generally organized uh, people uh, working in an organization, they would have certain accesses, accesses to different tools. Um, it can be, an email, for example. So whenever a new employee is hired, he or she would have a certain email address that would be his official email for official communication. So now what, uh, just, to, just to make you understand and give you an example, let's say I am running a hire process and I have defined there that once this process is complete, it will, um, I have actually integrated it with my uh, IT system. And now, as soon as the higher process is completed, 
uh, the new user will uh, like the email address of new user will be created automatically and he or she will uh, get uh, licenses of different softwares depending on uh, what role he or she is having again there is a lot of working behind that there are a lot of uh, configurations done that makes the process easy so the idea is what i'm trying to explain here is that sometimes we we uh, like uh, the the configuration that we, we are using the business process that we are using it actually triggers another business process and it's actually integrating our different systems and different processes consolidated approval so it can combine multiple approval for the same person into a single uh, approval task notification we can also take a look of the business process i'll uh, show you that as well uh, find events report can help you answer questions such as what's the status of a specific hire why was a hire cancelled or rescinded what are all the hires initiated by a specific employee so these are the different kind of reports all uh, that are available in the system so um let's just go through these notes and then we'll move back to uh, the tenant and see a couple of more things so the business process configurations options report is one of the most useful tools for planning and configuration of your business process this report informs how business process type can be configured and detailed options available and any restrictions that include um so for example organization types for which it, it is valid so as i mentioned that let's say if we are having a customized business process so which organization uh, would use that business process so we can do that what actions or approvals we are allowing what are the options uh, we want to be uh, available during that business process so for example um you cannot have change benefits for life events or process prior to the completion step that's a restriction that we are adding pre there can be prerequisite actions that are required to be bef uh, required before other actions so this is a, there is a whole detail behind it why we are configuring a certain business process in a certain way and based on that we make these choices that uh, what like if we need to define any restriction if we need to define any prerequisite actions or steps so these all are and that's why uh, there is a whole like whole analysis is uh, done before we start configuring this so we need to have full uh, understanding of our requirement what we are really looking for what processes or sub processes we want to configure and then we define these steps so um task one explore business process configuration options report um sign in with logan mcnell search for and select the business process configuration options report so let's just um do this one business process configurations option so this is again this is a work day uh, delivered report and that's telling us the 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 details of um, this business process again as you saw that i specifically defined or asked for a higher business process so it's actually um giving me that specific thing i can uh like filter that information uh, depending on what my requirement is so let's just go back again and let's see what so return business process for which the selected are so there is nothing here let's just take a look of some additional uh, 
absence calendar let's see so it's not defined so we over here we are uh, we have opened the termination process again we can by accessing these reports we can uh, like we can uh, access the information through these reports and just a little if we go back here so i also just want to show you one more thing so this was the employee that i was um, performing a business process on so let's see so we can see here this is this is basically the business process that i um, initiated so now i have this this process is complete um there was by default a due date entered in the business process i did not enter anything all i entered was the effective date the system is actually recording this date automatically and the due date is defined there so there might be one week time or seven days time defined in the business process and that's why it's, it's showing due date here now each and every business process that we are running against any individual it is maintained in uh, worker history so every process that is starting from uh, like depending on what uh, what are the events we want to uh, see here we can uh, see each and everything even if we want that we uh, like each and every process since the the individual was higher we can see that as well now um i want let's say i for any reason i made a mistake in the business process and i want to make a correction in that so i would uh, go to the business process and i will i will correct it um for example i want to resend it i mistakenly run the process for xyz reason maybe i was i was supposed to run it for another lisa and i made a mistake and i want to resend it so i can perform both actions let's just first try correct so i went to correct business process and what correction i want to make so let's say i let's say i just want to mention that um i specified a wrong currency there and i want to make it this so uh, i made the change i if i want to add anything else here i can do that as well and i will just submit it now you see whenever we are making this change we are supposed to add a certain comment let's say um, i want to mention here that correction of um, currency and let's say requested by maybe somebody else requested it and i am doing it for another person's behalf so i can specify that again that's an example i can put that information for future reference and then i submit it so now i have corrected that business process and let's say if i want to resend it i'm i let's say um mistakenly did it so i want to resend it so i'll this system will take me again to this and i can resend it again uh, i am supposed to add a comment here if i'm not the system will prompt me that why i am doing this so i can say uh, mistakenly executed 
uh, or whatever the reason is and then i'll submit it now this event is rescinded now you can see that the process was executed but then i rescind it so i can see that here now i want to check for example that what what were the steps performed there so i want to take a look of full process record that what actions were performed what how many events were uh, like took place who did what so see over here uh, first of all i actually executed this process then i corrected this business process i add this i added these comments and then i rescinded this business process so i have and that's a very strong i would say powerful thing of the system that it has a very strong audit trail who did what when we can always go and check and uh, check that uh, what happened what's the cause of the problem uh, was there any specific steps performed and from here we can see all the events related to this process uh, this process all the actions that were performed in the business process so you see all this record is available in the system and it would be the same it would be the same for every business process so we can always go and check we can correct it we can resend it but yes this again this access are uh, available or these options are available to specific people only who have uh, advanced level administrative rights not everybody can uh, do that but all the business processes that are available in the system we can perform all these actions there so and these are the comments that i entered so i can also see the comments here when something was done what a step was performed who performed those steps all of this information is available in the system one more thing that i'd like to show you guys and that was about termination so you see we have over here we have this questionnaire uh, attached to it so what's the questionnaire let's just take a look so there is exit interview questionnaire that is um, that is attached to it let's just take a look that what are the questions so when a termination is executed this is a questionnaire that we have attached in the process so the employee will get this and what are those questions so what is your main reason for living Le uh, leaving the organizations so you are for these are the reasons let's say the employee is selecting this one uh, rate your workload uh, what values did you see um, did you experience in your time here so these are the again these are depending on what information we are looking for we can have uh, like questionnaires attached to it okay so uh, we can of course create different questionnaires whatever what sort of uh, information we need we can um do that add it in the process as well so again uh, that was just an example to uh, explain that uh, you can attach questionnaires as well and it all depends on our requirement if i want that questionnaire to be filled by an employee then i also want it to be reviewed by someone so i can do that as well uh maybe we can uh we can get a job certificate let's just take a quickly check what so we have defined the process here and maybe we can we are allowing that uh individual for example to get um like to see a job certificate online so again it all depends what 
we what steps what task we want to add we uh, want to add in the process we can do that these are the notifications and this is the this is the process so this is the process flow over here again this is workday is automatically creating this uh, diagram to define that what the business process is so this was the same thing that we um, that was referred in the slides so we can uh, we can see that what uh, steps are there what tasks are there which uh, task will be performed by uh, which group of people so you see hr administrator or these these people can have uh, can do that HR partner can perform the, these actions. Employee itself can do this. So all these uh, things are actually dependent on how we have configured it, what we have defined in the business process. So let's just get back here. Business process configurations. So we can added business process you can configure business processes to meet the needs of your organizations configuration is start with a baseline business process and from there you can add <clears throat> change reorder or delete steps specify the security groups involved as those steps and configure features such conditions rules help text notifications and how the steps are labeled in your users inboxes Configurations options for each business process are governed and described in the business process configuration options report, which we'll be using throughout the training. The security group defined in your business process are first defined in the business process security policy. Uh, as we'll see throughout this course, the business process definition is driven by what functions are available and who is involved in the process. So uh, we can make edits to uh business process as well so configuration options um steps action test tasks that are possible what steps task actions do we want to include who is responsible uh who is allowed to participate configurable instance or event uh added in view mode overview when working with business process configuration consider two modes that we will be working in to do our configurations added in view refer to this chart if you need guidance as to why, which modes dictate which configuration options so what you can do in added mode and what you can do in view mode so uh, we'll let's just try and do this like added the business process so you can get an understanding that uh, what and how these uh, steps are actually edited or what we can uh, like how we can configure or customize is based on our uh, requirement. So let's just go back. One option is that I am editing anything in the uh, over here where I am specifying that uh, who can start the business process. So as I mentioned, so these, uh, so people who have any of these roles can actually initiate the business process. Uh, security groups who can delegate this action to others so that if somebody has a manager role, then he or she can actually delegate it to someone else. Um, again, we are defining here the security groups. So each and every terminate from submit resignations, who can do what, which uh, what security groups can perform, which action. So the, this is all this definition. Now, if we want to, let's say if I over here, if I want to, for example, define add another role, I'll type it and I'll add it here so this is what uh, again these all these roles have different uh, level of excesses so we can do that the idea is you should before before doing this you should have 
absolutely uh, like absolute clarity that what these roles uh, what rights or what accesses these roles have so again uh, if i want to add it anything or maybe as i mentioned that if i want to uh, copy or link the business world definition let's just try and edit this one see this one week due date is defined here and now these are the these are the steps configured configured here uh, i can make it for example b1 which means that after a pro a is ordered this step will complete and then this step will complete b2 if i want to so for if we have configured a business process and if we are if we want to um, like add a step so we instead of like uh, disturbing that whole process we can simply add a, a step here from over here we can give it the order and then define what uh, I, what we want to be done by defining that task and you see each and every steps that uh, step that we have defined in the business process we are assigning we are defining the group that can perform that action and we are also giving due date here uh, and based on this, we can, of course, set different kind of notifications here. Uh, over here, we have like, again, that's the same thing, questionnaire and the document. Uh, we can have uh, different notifications defined here. So we can uh, do that as well. What action is allowed by which role? It's also giving us the summary of that. So this is how we can basically add it uh, the business process and we can make different configuration based on our specific requirements. So um, order of parallel steps in inbox. So edit the business process definition in each step with the same order, type one or more letters in the parallel step inbox order. Work did displays the inbox task in the Opposite order is specified in the business process definition. If you sort your inbox by newest on tops. Again, this is talking about the workday inbox thing and how this, uh, this is coming in the inbox and how it's uh, getting displayed there. If a business process administrator sets up parallel steps in this order in the business process definition, again, that's the same thing to define the order. Uh, if one of the parallel steps is worked on and saved for later, the order relative to other steps parallel to it is not maintained. So uh, sometimes we have not, uh, there is a step that is defined, but we are not completing it. So we can save it for later. Um, <clears throat> we can... The, the this is talking about the settings of our inbox how we want it to be displayed whether we want the oldest items to be on top or well whether we want to reverse the order of the steps so um common business process steps these are some of the examples uh change organization assignment for worker uh, business process and action for the employee, employee itself to change benefit elections. If there is also a company change, there can be business title, um, business process. There can be expense report. That's more on for the um, expense side of things, customer invoice, email. But on a <clears throat> uh, with from our perspective, uh, a quick uh, thing to understand is that, for example, if I want to change organization assignment business process again if i am going to employee i am going to organization and if i want to change organization assignment i will select the date Maybe I can also do it for future date. And if I want to, let's say, 
uh, change any of this information. Let's say I want, uh, I want to change the cost center of this employee, maybe temporarily, maybe, or maybe I, this uh, resource is getting transferred to another region. So I can make the change and submit it. It will get executed. Again, that's an example of another business process. Change business title similarly. So let's just close it. I want to change uh, the business title, let's say. So I would go to job change, change business title. And again, these are all different business processes. Whatever process I want to initiate, I would go to that option. And now, for example, let's say I want to make it, uh, make the title manager payroll, let's say. So I will just do it, submit it. I think it has, for some reason it's stuck, but that's the process. Again, it can be a promotion, it can be change job, it can be change in job details. These are different business processes and they are steps or tasks defined at the back end that we need to do. Again, all these things um, you guys have to practice and uh, understand once you uh, explore it yourself, then you will uh, then you will understand what's involved there and uh, how these uh, options are working. Um, again, that's also these are some of the additional examples of uh, business processes. So higher business process, as I mentioned, that if employee is supposed to submit a form. So W4 form, uh, change of business process, the security administrator has to do a review user-based uh, security group assignment to ensure those still apply once the employee has changed jobs. Um, so these are different business processes, onboarding uh, step business process, for example, let's say uh, there, may, there might be a number of, let's say documents that are added in the business process and I want employee to go through those documents or maybe update their skills or their experience and work as part of the uh, uh, onboarding process. So those sort of um, details can be done. To do steps can be associated with any active security groups in the tenant. They are not tied to restriction in the business for security policy like task and actions. Now over here, it's telling us that how, so we saw that uh, the there are different processes. There is a to-do step. There is approval step. There is initiate uh, initiation step. Depending on, so over here, uh, it's actually telling us that to-do steps can be associated with any active security groups in the tenant. To-do steps are not tied to restrictions in the business process security policy like tasks and actions are when added to a business process definitions. You can also use a mass action to cancel to-do steps. So uh, over here, it's again, it's giving us a tip that run the to-dos report to see a list of the to-dos steps used throughout the business process. You can also see helpful information such as how often the to-do is used and in which specific business process. Again, this is basically the purpose is that if we want to take a look and if we want to check that how many to-dos were like executed in the report, so we can um, check that list. Parallel steps, uh, again, as we just uh, check that we can have um, multiple steps performing at once, like in this, uh, at, at the same time. So you see that uh, this is, um, both of these are having D uh, order. It means that both of these steps will be executed in parallel. And the giving these order actually defines that how we want a certain step to be executed. Uh, Parallel steps can be completed in any order, but all must be completed before the next step starts. So uh, this work day, basically this is a service. Again, we have linked that service that 
once the, uh, the action is taken uh, then it will trigger these both steps so this this will uh, this will run through a service so it, uh, the workday account will be created and then uh, in parallel we are also like running this step so now the last thing the uh, last thing is about business process notifications so from the related actions menu of a business process definition select business process add notifications to add this notification with a step configure the notification to trigger on step entry or exit and then select the trigger step select an effective dates enter the time zone so we are adding a notification here um, you can specify that a notification trigger on entry of workflow work step or trigger on entry of signing group when the business process enters that steps. Um, notification triggers include the trigger specifications and the rules you specify. Both triggers must be met before the notification is sent. So we can add different notifications. We can define different conditions as well. So this is, uh, this is an example of a uh, sample notifications. So for example, um, edit workflow notification completed notify sales department head. Now we have, we have, we are actually specifying here that what notifications we want and what's the condition, what's the rule of that. So the rule is that cost center should be sales because this is for, let's say, um, higher for networks but the rule is that cost center should be sales and if for example we are running an internal transfer so the proposed cost center should be sales that's the rule so once we once we run the business process as soon as it's triggered it will actually check this rule and then we'll go further. So these, these sort of rules are there that we are defining. Let's just quickly check this one. So see uh, this from here, we are actually defining the, we are creating the notification. I, uh, do we want it to be on entry, on exit? Uh, what's, how that should be triggered? We can define from here and see there are different steps already we have defined here. And if we want it to be triggered by a specific status, by a specific step, we can do that. And again, the rule thing. So, the condition that we were uh, like talking about. So let's say, for example, um, one person is getting transferred uh, from one region to another, let's say from US to Canada, let's say. US has, uh, our US office has uh, different rule, different benefits depending on our local um norms local laws local structure and canada has a different one now let's say if i am going to uh, run that process and if i want that uh, the employee has for example let's say this is the condition rule that if this condition will meet then uh, this certain action should be performed again the depending on uh, like we can even add a message here. We can uh, how that uh, what are what's the condition of that and how how we want that to be delivered to that uh, specific uh, individual. So see, this is this is the condition. It's the same way that cost center sales over here. We are saying that uh, location should be Dallas. And what's there? So this is the 
compensation rule that we have created and let's see i'm using the same example that's there in the slide and let's say i'm saying it's sales so there are different like sales i am selecting this one so this is this is an example of uh, i have to do um, define this uh, give the give it a name and the reason is that i want to make sure that if i need to use this rule in future i can identify it easily from the name again i can do that and i can define this rule again this is uh, a compensation eligibility rule but the but the overall process is the same so we can have different conditions and rules defined based on which we can add notifications so these are the different uh, like different kind of uh, notifications that we can uh, add in the business process as well so uh, that's all for today's session